Paul addresses this letter to the church in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul was writing, writing to a group of people that basically were rich beyond measure in spiritual things. Their spiritual bank account was full and overflowing. Yet through ignorance, and that word ignorance means not taught, not stupid or things that we associate with it today. It just means that it's unlearned or untaught. But because of their ignorance, they had never tapped into the wealth, the spiritual wealth that was available to them. And I think this is part of the problem with the church today. We have riches untold. But we're living like the church at Ephesus. We're living like spiritual paupers. And Paul writes to these people. He addresses, uh, he addresses this letter to them. And he teaches them. He teaches them the biblical doctrines. When I was at Calvary, oh, I guess we were pretty close to a year studying the Baptist faith and message. And it was probably the greatest Bible study that I'd ever been in. Because we learned why we believe what we believe. And one of the most important facts that I learned was this. They're biblical truths, not Baptist doctrines. We believe them, we have accepted them, and we take them as Baptist doctrines because they are biblical truths. Amen. And that's what Paul is doing here. Paul breaks this letter to the Ephesians down and to the faithful in Christ. Uh, he breaks it down into three segments. And the first three chapters, he's just telling them all of the wonderful things that they have. Teaching them biblical doctrines. I had a lady one time, I was preaching at a church, and uh, this uh, very nice lady was kind enough to come up to me after service and tell me that they didn't like doctrinal messages. Okay? And a lot of Christians don't. A lot of church members think that uh, uh, doctrinal messages ranks right up there with a two-hour lecture on how a pencil eraser works. They think they're dry. They think they're boring. But that's not necessarily true. And Paul spends the first three chapters of this letter teaching the Ephesians and us too um, I think we fall under the faithful in Christ Jesus. So this letter is addressed to us also. But he spends the first three chapters teaching them biblical doctrine. You know, I, I'm not sure why church members cringe when you say you're going to preach on doctrine. The whole Bible is a doctrine. It's the facts that are here that we study, that we believe. That's what doctrine is. Uh, we have the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of sanctification, justification. We need to know these things so that we too are not ignorant of the, the wealth is, that is at our disposal. Listen to some of the things that's in our heavenly bank account. That Paul wrote, that in, in these first three chapters, Paul wrote about these things, explaining them to the church at Ephesus. That was what was in their bank account. The doctrine of adoption, acceptance. You know, we forget about acceptance a lot. 
because of our position in Christ Jesus, because of the righteousness that has been imputed to us by Jesus Christ, we are now accepted by God. Think about that for a minute. You see, you were at one time the enemy of God. And because of your belief, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, He traded you your sins for His righteousness. His righteousness was imputed. And that word imputed means charged to your account. He charged to your account His righteousness. So now you are accepted. God will accept you as a child. But we have adoption. We have acceptance. We have redemption. We have forgiveness. We have wisdom. Inheritance. The seal of the Holy Spirit. We have eternal life. We have God's grace. We have heavenly citizenship. In short, every spiritual blessing. And Paul's writing to these people. And he's explaining to them what they have sitting in their bank account that's untapped. That they were trying to live without. And once again, I believe that today the church is in the same position. We have forgotten. We have become too cultured, too civilized. To be talking about some of these things. One denomination has taken all of the, the songs out of their hymnal that deal with the blood. Folks, let me tell you, without the blood of Jesus Christ, we have nothing but a social club. Amen. And the day that the, we take it out of our hymnals is the day we'll go somewhere else. Without the blood... We're as lost as a, a ball in tall grace. So looking at Ephesians chapter 4. And, and we re reviewed with you what was in chapter 3. To bring you up to chapter 4. Uh, here in chapter 4 Paul says. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you. That ye walk worthy of. Of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, this day and, Father, for this another opportunity. Uh, Father, to, to come and, and to stand before your people uh, and share what the Holy Spirit has given unto us. Father, we just pray that as we talk about these things and, and look into your word, that uh, he, the Holy Spirit, would just speak through us. And Father, that uh, he would give us the, the words that need to be said. And Father, the, uh, what needs to be uh, said here tonight that would touch our hearts. Father, that would, oh, Father, just uh, excite us to the point that uh, we've got to do things. We, we've got to work. We've got to, to tell others about your loving grace, about your mercy. Father, that we would just uh, be on fire for you. Father, we pray for hearts that are burdened for the lost. Father, we just ask now that if there's one here tonight that uh, doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would come to give their heart to you tonight before it's eternally too late. Father, we ask now that you will be with us, build a hedge around us. Uh, Father, that Satan can't uh, get to us. Father, to distract us or uh, interrupt the service in any way. Father, we ask these things in thy name. And amen. amen. So, looking here in chapter 4, and, and we, like I say, we, we talked about all the things uh, 
that Paul, the, the, the doctrines that Paul talked about in the first three chapters, he's given us here the theory, the basis, the doctrines. He's teaching us the things we need to know about the fact that we have been adopted into the family of God. That we're now sanctified, set apart. That we have been redeemed, bought back, bought off of the slave market forever. All of these things Paul goes through and he explains to this church at Ephesus. But then here in chapter 4, the direction changes. He's no longer talking about the principles. He's no longer talking about the theories, about the doctrines. Now he's changing that direction. That, that, that one word, I therefore. And with that word, he changes the directions. What Paul was doing here is he's told you, all right, now remember these things I've taught you. Remember what I've said. We're going to put them to use. We're going to put them in practice. In other words, he's telling us it's time for you to practice what you preach. I think the phone's ringing. You get that bill. Okay, he's telling us we're going to practice what you've been taught. You've got the theory. You've got the doctrine. You've got all the book learning you're going to get. Now it's time to put it to use. And that's what he's telling this church. And this is the challenge that Paul has for the church. Not only in that day, but today also. So today... God's Word, the Apostle Paul, and I challenge you. Challenge you to put to use. Challenge you to draw upon the spiritual bank account that you have. Challenge you to be all that you can be. The Army used to have a slogan. They'd run advertisements on TV. Be all that you can be. I think they took it from Paul. Because here Paul is telling us, you need to live up to your capabilities. Live up to your possibilities. And that's what he's telling the church then. And that's what he's telling the church today. Put it to use. He's telling us that the things that he has taught us demands a response. I've told you. Now what are you going to do with it? I've given to you. Now what are you going to do with it? At work we have two different types of engineers. We have engineers that have studied and that's all they know is book knowledge. If something doesn't work, they don't have a clue. They may, they may have designed it. But if it doesn't work, they don't know how to make it work. They're paper engineers. And then we have some that couldn't design a paper airplane. But you can give them a piece of equipment that doesn't work, and they can tell you exactly what's wrong with it. And rarely do you have one that can do both jobs. You see, that's what we are today. We've got all the book learning. Borrow a phrase from Jethro Bodine, okay? We've got the book learning. We can cipher. Naught times naught is naught. <laughs> but we haven't put it to use. We're like the church of Ephesus. We're living as spiritual paupers when we have a bank account that's overflowing. <laughs> 